Hello, Fantastic Beast fans. At the end of Crimes of Grindelwald, Grindy offers Credence conclusive proof of his new identity, a flaming phoenix that comes to a true Dumbledore in times of need, kind of like Gryffindor's sword did for Harry. But is there a sly rolling twist there that we missed? I'm Susan Chappelle with Fantastic Secrets Behind Fantastic Beasts to bring you the clues. Join me and other Fantastic Beast fans here on the Beast Chaser Forum as we uncover the secrets, discover what's coming first, and play along with Rowling's newest game. And make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you'll be notified when videos post and won't miss out on the next clues. This video flows from the last one I posted that was in partnership with Sebastian at Wiki Harry Potter. I encourage you to check that one out first if you haven't already as it lays the groundwork for what's to come. In the last video, Sebastian and I found evidence that Grindelwald's family history and magical abilities may be associated with fire. We also noticed that Credence's chick only became a phoenix after Grindelwald took it in hand. I speculated that Grindelwald may have had something to do with that magical transformation. In this video, I'm going to explore this possibility more fully. Where did Credence's chick come from? In the film, it's never very clear, is it? He must already have it in scene 53 when he's walking through the bird market on his way to meet Irma Dugard, who he thinks is his mother. We know this because we see him stealing bird seed to feed it. This scene is very short. The only thing of note, besides Credence stealing the bird seed, is Grimson watching him. Then, the first time we see the chick is several scenes later on the rooftop when Credence is feeding it before Grindelwald appears. But we never see Credence actually get the chick. However, clues from one of the companion books to the film and a note shown briefly during it give strong clues that Credence got the chick at the bird market and may have been given it by Grimson. In scene 24, Grindelwald sends Nagel with a note to give to Credence. Grindelwald says that the note will begin his journey. Then, in scene 42, we see Credence with a note to meet under the bridge at the bird market. Bird market? That's not a mere coincidence. The Art of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald by Dermot Power reveals earlier plans for an important scene that was cut to almost nothing in the final film. In the concept art shown, we see that the bird market scene was longer and carefully planned out. There is more focus on the birds in the market. There's also a meeting between Credence and a man related to Grindelwald. This meeting must have been where Credence was given the information of where to find Irma Dugard. And it's very possible that because of this meeting there, Credence could have found the chick. Or the chick could have found him. Even in the part of the scene that remains, Grimson is watching Credence intently. Grimson, who's introduced as a beast hunter for hire, would have access to strange and unusual birds and be the perfect person to plant such a chick on Credence, on behalf of Grindelwald. At the very least, if Credence happened to pick up a stray chick at the market, Grimson would have been aware of it. But birds seem to be everywhere in Fantastic Beasts, don't they? Even in subtle references. Do you remember back when the clip of Grindelwald's dark banners flying through Paris was first released prior to the movie? We were all speculating on what this thing was. Most of us had two guesses, either Credence's Obscurus or Leatherfold. Of course, both happened to be wrong. However, I wonder if the resemblance to the Obscurus is deliberate. The initial clip of Grindelwald's dark banners looked eerily similar to another scene that featured prominently in pre-publicity but was later cut, the murmuration. I have a whole video on that if you want to check it out here. But the point I'm making is that the flying and twisting of Grindelwald's dark banner over the Parisian rooftops and then swooping over Tina and Newt is very similar to the look and movement of Credence Obscurus as it twists and turns and passes through Nagini. I want to consider too that initial images of Grindelwald's banners had his Deathly Hallows logo on it. Later, for the film, it was changed to a white raven. The raven could of course be a pointer to the Lestrange family vault at the cemetery, but it took the place of the mark of Grindelwald. 
Then, as Grindelwald's dark banners recede, we catch a glimpse of them fluttering in the reflection of the attic window where Credence feeds his chick. Grindelwald has found Credence. Could the banners with the white raven and the chick be connected? Furthermore, when Grindelwald gives Credence the map to the cemetery, he throws it into the air. The parchment flutters to Credence and lands gently in his hand. Later, with the phoenix, Credence's chick steps gingerly onto Grindelwald's palm. Grindelwald throws it in the air where it catches a light. The two seem visually similar, do they not? I think Rowling is giving us subtle links between the magical powers of Grindelwald and of Credence, of birds and fire. When we see Credence's Obscurus attacking Grimson, there's a lot of fire imagery, just like we discussed with Grindelwald in the last video. While Credence may not be Corvus Lestrange, his Obscurus does take on the shape of a murmuration when free with Nagini. So, the way Credence got the chick is suspect, and there is a linking of Credence's and Grindelwald's powers to both birds and fire. But what of it? To understand how this might all come together in that final scene at Nurmengard, I want to investigate the curious incident of the Matago. In a video I did with Universe Harry Potter, shortly after the first snippet of Melisande and her cats were shown, we were the first to catch that the cats were Matago. As a named character, and with a name that hinted at intriguing mythology, I speculated that Melisande would have a larger role than she actually did. But now, I think both she and her kitties were extremely significant. Their role just played out more in subtext. In 2015 on Pottermore, J.K. Rowling said that there were no spirit familiars in her wizarding world. Familiars, in the strictest sense, do not exist within the world of Harry Potter. Although Hogwarts students are permitted to bring animals to school with them, the cats and rats we see there are, broadly speaking, pets. However, in Crimes of Grindelwald, we are introduced to spirit familiars. Newt says, these aren't cats, they're matagos, they're spirit familiars. In the last video, we talked about the switching of Nurmengard from being a fortress to now a castle. I don't think Rowling would lightly change the world she's already built. As we already discussed what a castle could mean to Grindelwald's family history, I now think that the addition of the spirit familiar could shed new light on this story, and I think that reason is a big clue. Rowling says, familiars are animals, some say animal-shaped spirits, that serve a witch in various ways, whether as servants, messengers, or even spies. The Matago appear to be Melisande's familiars. They guard the ministry at her command, and they even seem to take on each other's look and personality. She has a sleek, cat-like appearance, and they move in the same cat-like manner. So why would Rowling switch from no spirit familiar to spirit familiars unless there was an important role there to play? Yes, the Matago in real-life mythology are spirit familiars, but Rowling could have chosen any non-spirit beast to guard the French ministry. I believe there was a crucial reason for introducing this concept into the wizarding world, and I think that reason links to the biggest twist at the end of the film. Perhaps the Matago revealed the truth about the Phoenix. Is it possible that Credence's chick, which Grindelwald transforms into a Phoenix, is a spirit familiar? This is highly speculative because there's so little information to go on, as we know nothing about how spirit familiars work in the wizarding world aside from Melisande's Matago. We don't know if these spirits can take on other animal forms. For example, could one act a bit like the Patronus or Animagus, taking on an animal related to its master and thus having an endless variety of shapes? We don't know how they operate and they are not mentioned in Newt's revised textbook, Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them. But notice this curiosity. When the Matago leave the magical environment, they greatly shrink in size, transforming into kittens. Credence's chick transforms from chick in the outside world to phoenix inside Normengard through the transition of Grindelwald's hand. 
As we pointed out in the last video, normally, when a phoenix transforms by fire, it is from aged bird to newborn chick, not chick to adult. Something is fishy here, or should we say kitty? I think it's highly possible that Grindelwald has planted a spirit familiar on Credence to serve as possibly an assistant or probably a spy. Whether the phoenix is now Credence's familiar or remains loyal to Grindelwald, there's just not enough information to know which master it will serve. However, Rowling herself said spirit familiars could act as a spy. I believe we need to be very suspicious of any interactions between Credence and that phoenix going forward. If I'm right about this theory, and that's a big if, this does not mean that Credence is not a Dumbledore. If you've been following my theory since FB2 released, you know that I believe he's a Dumbledore, but I also believe he's a Grindelwald, and now I'm highly suspicious that Phoenix is not what it appears to be. Until we know more information about how spirit familiars work in the wizarding world, it's impossible to be sure. However, at the very least, I believe that Grindelwald planted that chick on Credence so that he could transform it at the proper moment to offer Credence and the viewer the proof Credence needed of his new identity. At the most, I believe we have a cleverly disguised spy that Credence fully trusts. So, what do you all think? Are you suspicious of that phoenix? If you think he's a spirit familiar, what purpose could he serve? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Also, please check out my new fan shop on Amazon for books and Funko Pops and Wands and all things Fantastic Beast.